Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. Governor John DeYoung is calling on Congress to help sort out a dispute over an agreement that the Virgin Islands government made in 1994 with the United States agency. If DeYoung's efforts are successful, it could mean millions of dollars in added annual revenue to the territory. News 2's April Knight has the tales. A dispute between the VI government and the United States Customs and Border Protection is costing the territory, according to Governor John DeYoung, and he said Congress has to intervene. The territory has been collecting about $16 million a year in duties and fees from local businesses, but Customs and Border Protection has been taking large amounts out of those collections. Over 94% of the monies collected in the VI were being retained, so we were getting less, if at all. In fiscal year 12, we received no monies whatsoever with respect to what we collected. In 2012, for example, the agency has taken some $12 million in customs duties and another $12 million to cover its costs in immigration and agriculture inspection as well as customs operations. We were being charged for items that were clearly outside of the U.S. Virgin Islands having to do with customs costs in other areas and agricultural costs. Also, we were paying for overhead costs at the Washington, D.C. headquarters. De Young also questioned why customs is paying for its own operation costs in foreign Caribbean countries while charging the VI government for the same services. This is all a product of an agreement between the VI government and the old Customs and Border Protection Agency. And while Customs is willing to take a second look at this agreement, De Young says Congress needs to step up to cover the difference. If Congress fails to intervene, Customs might have to cut back on services like pre-clearance at the airports and cruise docks. Outreach to the, the Congress and say, listen, please look at, at the CBP operations, look at your use of fees, look at the funds that are available, increase those allocations so that we can be able to rightfully so have more of the monies retained in the U.S. Virgin Islands. According to DeYoung, this outdated setup adds to the territory's financial strain and must be renegotiated as soon as possible. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Governor DeYoung also wrote letters to the Democratic and Republican leadership of Homeland Security and Appropriations Committees to gain their support for the territory's position. Senator Alicia Chucky Hansen has submitted a bill to authorize and direct the Public Finance Authority to make up to $30 million available to construct a new school to replace the current Central High School on St. Croix. This comes after Central High School students had to miss several days of school as it was closed to remediate the overwhelming odor that plagued the school and sickened dozens of students. The bill proposal calls for a state-of-the-art track and field and indoor volleyball court, music class facilities, a computer center, science labs, football and soccer fields, and agricultural grounds to be included at the new school campus. Count on two to keep you updated. VI policymakers, business leaders, academics, data experts, and members of the media held a breakfast conference Tuesday to discuss a groundbreaking new report from the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands and the VI's Kids Count program. The report, authored by the Population Referen Reference Bureau, highlights a serious concern that the territory's child population decline could result in less funding for children at a time when investing in our children is more crucial than ever. The theme, using our past to plan our future. And with that in mind, policymakers and a panel of local experts dove into the data from the Population Reference Bureau's report on the children in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The report digests data from the 2010 census and trend statistics that speak directly to the well-being of our children. Uh, what we found is that the population of children in the Virgin Islands is actually declining, but at the same time, um, we're finding a lot of those kids are at risk of negative outcomes, and especially young kids. So uh, policymakers really need to pay attention to how kids are doing in preschool, you know, school-age kids. These are the kids that are going to make up the future workforce in the, in the Virgin Islands, so it's just critical that they have the resources that they need to, to make successful transitions to the labor force. Striking trends include the sharp decline in the child population, falling 21% between 2000 and 2010, 
while the percentage of VI children living in poverty remained strikingly high, with one in three VI children living below the federal poverty line, a higher rate than any other state except Mississippi, and far higher than the national rate. The Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands is one of our network of Kids Count organizations, and we have 53 of them in states and territories across the country. Uh, they are powerful advocacy groups across the country that use data, really are experts in data around kids and families, and use that data to compel action by decision makers to invest in kids all across America. Tuesday's panel was laser focused on solutions. The data is really important but it's the analysis of that data and then the feedback of that data into the program that's even more important. Now for your free copy of the report or to find out how you can help make the territory's children priority number one visit cfvi.net. We'll also have a link to the report on our New Stu Facebook page. The Department of Human Services and the VI Police Department are working together to return two minors to the VI Behavioral Services Boys Group Home where they reside. The boys ran away from the facility on April 30th at approximately 3.30 p.m. Kevon Benjamin is 16 years old, 5'8 and 158 pounds. He has a dark complexion with dark brown eyes. He was wearing a black t-shirt with black baseball shorts and white, yellow and gray Air Jordan slippers. Manuel Davis is 17 years old, Hispanic, 5'9", and 189 pounds. He has a light brown complexion with dark brown eyes. He was wearing a blue hat with a black shirt, black basketball shorts, and black Air Jordan slippers. Anyone who may know of Kevon Benjamin and Manuel Davis's whereabouts or may have seen them, you're urged to contact the VIPD Juvenile Bureau at 715-5541 or 778-2211. Across the nation and locally, teachers and other education professionals are being recognized this week. May 5th through the 9th is National Teacher Appreciation Week, and officials are encouraging everyone to stop and say thank you to teachers and support staff for what they do to help students achieve. Education Commissioner Donna Fred Gregory said in a statement that she extends her appreciation to the dedicated teachers of the VI. She acknowledged the incredible educators and all those who work hard to teach and guide students. Meanwhile, St. Thomas St. John Federation of Teachers President Bernal Delagarde also expressed appreciation to all AFT members, especially educators. She also added, let's continue the level of activism as we continue to lobby for changes to proposed school calendar. She encourages members to join in the legislative session on Monday, May 12. Well, many have been waiting since Carnival ended on Saturday and now finally, here are your Carnival Parade winners. For the Children's Parade, the St. Thomas Majorettes won first place in the Majorettes category, followed by the Charming Twirlers, first runner-up. For Troop Under 50, the St. Peter and Paul Troop won first place, while the BCB Middle School Quadrille Dancers were first runner-up. And for the Floop category, Gems in Paradise got the top spot. For the Adults Parade, the Charming Twirlers won first place. Chester Brady's One Man Float won the individual category. For Troop Under 50, Caribbean Ritual Dancers, they got the top spot with Party Lovers Carnival Troop as first runner-up. For Troop Over 50, Real Mass Carnival Troop emerged as the winner. With the University of the Virgin Islands following right behind, the Gypsy Troop was the best troop in the Over 100 category Followed by the Infernos, the traditional Indians won first place in the traditional category. As for the road march, it's a tie between Spectrum Band and their song Manners and Volume International and their song Recipe. Congratulations to all the winners. Well, after more than three weeks, the Nigerian government is accepting U.S. help to find more than 200 girls who were kidnapped from their school. The announcement comes after another group of girls were abduct, abducted overnight. Monday, the group claimed responsibility for the abduction of more than 200 girls from that school. The leader says the girls will be sold as wives. Parents of the girls say over the last three weeks, the Nigerian government has provided little help. After several offers from the White House Tuesday, Nigeria's president accepted U.S. assistance in search for the girls. Tune in to CBS News tonight at 7.30 for the latest.
Keeping our eye on the economy, the Department of Transportation has released their yearly results, and the airline industry is flying high. In 2013, net income was just under $13 billion, and that's way up from just under $100 million in 2012. One reason for the jump, domestic airlines made more than $3.3 billion last year from baggage fees alone. Delta led the pack with $833 million, followed by United at $625 million. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all down. The Dow 129, Nasdaq 57, S&P 16. Coming up on News 2, Governor John DeYoung hosted a proclamation signing ceremony at Government House St. Thomas this morning, designating this month as Mental Health Month in the Virgin Islands. Plus, we kick off a mental health awareness segment into your health. Learn more about your mental health. It's coming up. Governor John P. Young Jr. hosted a proclamation signing ceremony at Government House St. Thomas this morning, designating this month as Mental Health Month in the Virgin Islands. This week is also designated as Children's Mental Health Awareness Week and Thursday as Children's Mental Health Awareness Day. The administration is leading an effort to increase public awareness about not only the ravages of mental illness, but the services that are available across the territory. Among the speakers, Governor John Peter Young Jr., Health Commissioner Doris Plaskett, Doris Hepburn, Director of Division of Mental Health, Alcoholism and Drug Dependency Services, and more. Far too often symptoms are ignored due to lack of information, discrimination, perceived stigmas, or fear of treatment. These disorders in many forms should not be shunned or ignored as they are largely due to a social signal associated with the conditions. It simply makes good sense that we treat the body and mind in caring for our overall health and wellness needs. We are running a month-long radio campaign with public service announcements. There will be appearances on both radio and TV talk shows and forms of outreach to all over our community. And in conjunction with the Division of Mental Health, various sessions conducted by experts in the field of mental health will air throughout the month on the Government Access Channel in both districts. And also be sure to tune in on Wednesday. We will have more from that signing. Now, as part of, of Mental Health Awareness Month, during the entire month of May, News 2 is partnering with the Association of VI Psychologists to bring you topics related to mental health. In tonight's segment, we take a look at what it means to be mentally well. News 2's Erica Parsons has more. Your mental well-being is one of the most important pieces to being healthy, and it's an area we don't usually think about. Instead, when we even hear the words mental, we think of the unfortunate C word, which is crazy. We think of shame, stigma, guilt, um, or profound mental illness. And it's true, mental illness can take many different forms, some of which are depression and anxiety, but this month, professionals want the focus to be on mental wellness. One of the things with Mental Health Month is trying to get actually more people involved in a cause, and that is to be mentally well. Instead of focusing on the stereotypes of profound mental illness, which are serious and do occur, it's more for us to learn what are ways that we can actually be mentally well. What are things that are addressed, such as how can we address our depression? What about anxiety if it's getting in our way? What about relationship issues? One of the first steps to being mentally fit is being self-aware, being aware of what you're feeling, what your thoughts are. Sometimes we get so busy between iPhones, iPads, modern technology, radio, TV on all the time, we don't even know how we feel. Um, we stay noisy enough not to feel a little anxious, a little depressed, a little sad, and feeling negative emotions is actually a good thing. So if I'm feeling a little down, what should I be doing about it? Is that an indication that I'm not getting enough sleep or that I'm not eating well or that something is stressing me out? Experts say diet and exercise help as well as doing something good for someone else. We really need to stay committed to paying attention to high sugary foods, high fat foods, fried foods and how that makes us feel sluggish. We all admit that. So really trying to balance out with fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, um, less fat in our diet and also exercise, doing something active 20 minutes a day, whether that's 
walking a dog. A lot of people go walk on the bypass or on the roads or near the waterfront if it's St. Thomas, but being active. More and more studies are showing not only do we, uh, does the person feel good who is receiving um, good actions, but the person giving feels good. But it's important to note that if none of these things help, finding someone to talk to is not a bad idea. We don't need to be quote unquote crazy. We don't need to wait till all four tires are uh, flat to go figure out how to get help. Sometimes it's kind of what we would call the air in the tire. Being able to talk to someone where you're not worried that they're taking your business out on the street, but you're able to talk, tell them how you feel, do a couple uh, assessment type quizzes to get an idea of that and then they would be able to help give you tools that often later you're like I knew that. Erica Parsons News 2. There are a number of resources residents can find at the Departments of Health and Human Services as well as vipsychologists.org to help. Now Dr. Francis will be offering a forgiveness conference Saturday at St. Croix Christian Church next to CCT. You can RSVP to 718 3130, that's 718 3130, since space is limited. Well, it's also Senior Americans Month in the territory and Older Americans Month nationally. And to kick off the month long activities, the Department of Human Services held a small parade and ceremony at Roosevelt Park. Some 100 senior citizens participated in the activity and were honored with entertainment as well as daily living tips. Our very first celebration and commemoration of Older American Month, also known as Senior, Citizen, Senior Citizens Month. And today, we wanted to make sure we stay with the legacy of aging. We also want to make sure that we're consistent with the theme. The theme for this, um, this year is safe today, healthy tomorrow. Most of the activities was very relevant to staying healthy, aging healthy, and staying safe and secure. All of us are going to get up in age sometime point to the other so it's a trip especially they're having fun today and it's a it's a really an obligation for us. Well fun day out there be sure to stick around your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.